Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood dragon slayer presenting to you another commentary. And today we're actually going to be looking at the mission where I accomplished Alliance 1 for the Chimera. It might sound easy because it's, you know, the first mission in Alliance, but it's probably for me the most difficult one I had to do. Reason being, you have to do 25% of the team's HP and damage. Um, <laughs> and I think you have to win. So. It makes it a little more difficult. You gotta have one of those really nice high damage games, and you have to do it basically not a tier 10. You have to get a decent sized fight, which we have here. We only have four tier 9s, and surprise, surprise, I'm gonna do some fun. So, off the start, I actually kinda call it chat. <laughs> um, I wanna get in position. Actually, if you look at chat, call it GG. Um, I think my team's basically lost. And this is a situation where my team went full stupid almost as hard as theirs. And what I mean by that is, when you look at the way the team set up, both teams basically went the same direction and met head on. The difference was, um, I killed their middle, and their middle nothing dealt with. So we'll see that here in a minute. Um, great spot for coming here on, um, on Redshire. You, any, any stupid tanks trying to get there quickly, you'll usually catch, um, the flip side is you just got to be careful about light tanks like uh, wheeled vehicles buzzing you because it lights you up for their heavies that are traveling further back to hit you. So it's kind of a risk reward. It's a good spot if you can uh, take it in force. Um, but you know, each map's kind of different in terms of tank composition. This each map is different. Each time you play the map, it's a little different because of the tanks bringing with it, which is like a dub. So a little bit about how to accomplish Alliance 1. And a little bit of a why I love the cherry too. So Alliance 1, you need to get in like a 7 or an 8 that has high alpha, low health. Because you don't want to contribute too much to HP pool. But you want to set up in such a way where you can farm damage. You need, you need those four and 5,000 damage gains. So you need to find a tank where you can do that and fight potentially 6s and 7s, thus pushing the HP pool down as low as possible while having those Hess shells which is my two key. Watch this. Mm. That's always nice when you can get a nice high damage roll on a Hess shell. Hess shell's damage is like 480, 490, so I could never get that. I had another game just before this where I did like, like three and a half, four thousand damage, and I was hitting mediums with Hess shells and I was only doing 390, and I'm like, what's going on here? So it's nice when you can get those nice average rolls or little high rolls on your HE. These, this Leo in 34-100 are displaying to you what not to do. If you're in if you're fighting that bush, like, I would get spotted. Well, the reason is is because my view range and my camo are significantly better than theirs. Frankly, the T-34-100 is it's a purple machine. If you want to get purple, get good in it. Because it's, it's just one of those things where people are no good. Um, a quick trick with this. If he's doing that and side scraping, the problem is, is he can't hide all of his tank. So watch what I go and do. This is actually how to dig someone out of that spot. Because when he's in there like that, he can't actually fully hide everything. Um, just the way the angles work. So you can actually dig someone out of there and do this. Watch this. This is like, my IQ went up by 10 after this. So, I wasted a head shell, but you know, I still got four more. Surprise, surprise. They basically all fail. Um, I can't wait for, and that, that brings me to my next point. I can't wait for the HE changes to come about because I think Hess shells will be so much better in this game. And I also really love the Charioteer. Watch this. Oh, what was that? Side of the tank, hit his tracks, no pit. So, yeah, that, there's a, there's enough, there's basically a thousand damage I missed out on because instead of penetrating a side like I aim, track it. And that shell actually pinned. Um, the damage shell on the bottom is wrong. I did about 5.3k by the end of this battle. Um, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to each of changes. I think that they'll be really beneficial for certain tanks. Um, tanks with Hess shells are going to be a little more consistent now. Um, you can load them and actually penetrate. So, also, this, this game, uh, case is target priority. So I could take a pick of like any of these three tanks but this TS5 he's dangerous and I got his tracks locked 
and he's stuck. It's like his crew's like screwed. But a TS5, you can kill him. He's got DP him as high as mine, and better armor, better HP. So in terms of tank destroyers, a TS5 is what I would put up towards the top of the list of really, really good tank destroyers. Um, also at the top of the list, I would have um, the TS5, the Cherry Tier, the Scorpion G, maybe the SU-130, STR VS-1, if we're talking tier eights. Um, I was actually holding my shot, hoping to get a, uh, so that he wouldn't light me, but his T-10 buddy did it for me. These guys are actually really smart in the heavies, I gotta give them credit. They made sure that I could shoot them. So this is what you do to counterplay the middle, you're pushing in. Um, and I, I'm guessing I went dark and that guy gave up on me. So, I actually thought this guy was an A7, but the 430U corrected me, and we'll see him very soon. So, coming to an arty near you, uh, fast charioteer. And surprising in detail about the charioteer, it has 50 more HP than the tier 8 Chinese tank destroyer, the tech tree. And I dislike that tank because it can only basically take two hits. Um, it's kind of frustrating. I, I usually get two shot at it. And it has a thousand HP and it's got all this armor. And it's like the armor counts for nothing. Which is really weird because the Chinese tank destroyers go from like these really zippy, fast tank destroyers at tier 5, 6, and into 7. 7 not so much. The tier 6 one's pretty zippy still. At tier 8, it all of a sudden becomes this slow unwieldy behemoth that doesn't have a gun that hits particularly hard or accurate, and not enough armor to brawl. But then you jump to the tier 9, which is almost a carbon copy of the tier 10, but just a little worse stats. And you just have, like, this beautiful setup. And I thought I was actually going to not get lit when I did that. But, um, <laughs> surprise! This, this dude, this, yeah, he, there's no way he was ever going to hit me once I pulled around the corner. So, um, tons of blind kills this game. Tons of blind damage. But, but yeah, the tier 8 Chinese team. Just, there's just no reason for it to have that little HP. Give it 1,300. Give it 1,400. Give it any more than it has. And, it, and I think it would well balance out the Chinese tank destroyer line. Um, I've seen a few more of them since they've been on track recently. But they're still, I think, one of the least played tanks that I ever seen. I, I see some of the I see some tanks that are like the M6A1 that you have to buy that are rare. I see them more often than I see the Chinese tank destroyer. And that says a lot. Like that tank is rare. And I see it more often. I see a Type 59 gold more often than I see the Chinese tank destroyers and pubs. Now when I played mine and I finished that tech tree, oh, I love the tier nine. When you smack someone for 750 and then can like pull back around the corner really quick, it is absolutely beautiful. So yeah, the, the nine is is an absolute dream to play. Um, also, everyone's like the the death the the Death Star's cousin, uh, the FV 4005, is like the tank destroyer of this line. I I disagree. I actually really liked this entire line going up. I haven't bought the uh, Death Star's cousin because I don't see the point. Like, like I have the Death Star, and I know the FE is just faster. So, and it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a one-trick pony. Why? I, I, I have the Conway. I still love the Conway. I have the Charioteer. I have, well, I have the Charioteer for um, front lines. Also because it's just a fun tank. It is a Tier 8 Hellcat. And for those of you who remember the Hellcat, this Hellcat at its prime, this is a Tier 8 Hellcat. And when the Hesh and the HE changes come, oh baby, this thing is going to be super nice. I, I actually stripped this crew out and his crew's on the way, so this is a new crew. Um, but yeah, I, I only get one more shot of damage in after, uh, after this point. All I can say for you guys is um, I'm thinking about doing some shorts, like, like doing some like really quick like um, short uploads of like having a, a fun little thing I might do that day, like... If I did something really cool or funny or just got away with something, um, might do some shorts. Just, they seem like they're the hot thing right now. Um, I still play Eve. I still play World of Tanks. Um, might do a walkthrough of Jurassic Park. Like, me and my daughter have been playing the whole one. So, 
video is kind of wrapping up. I know I'm sporadic in uploads, but as, as I upload, as I have good games or games that I want to show off, um, I don't get them every day. So I uh, thank you guys for joining with me. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, encouragements, whatever, put them in down below. Um, when I do the 279E, when I get those missions going, um, I might do more. I might do some live streaming or something. I've actually been waiting and thinking uh, to live stream my, my progress on the 279E because it would be fun to, to do a 279E grind. Um, one of my buddies is well ahead of me on this 279E grind, and I really, really need to catch up with him. So. We might, we might do some live streaming together on YouTube just, just because. Uh, so give me your thoughts. Um, not the best player. Uh, so it's, it's just a fun thing we might do together. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this has been your friendly neighborhood Dragon Slayer presenting to you another commentary. Stay safe.